Welcome. Today we're going to explore the concept of praise. What is praise? Why should we praise? And how can we praise God? Christ's law is based on loving God and loving our neighbor. And when we praise God, we are showing that we love him with all our heart, soul, and mind. As we will discuss in this session, praise is one of the purposes of our lives, and it is a natural result of loving God with our whole being. So what is praise? The dictionary offers two definitions. Number one, to express admiration of, extol, and two, to offer grateful reverence to, as in words or song, to worship. To praise God is to call attention to who He is, and God has called us to this purpose. In Isaiah 43 we read, This people I have formed for myself, they shall declare my praise. This calling of praise wasn't just meant for the Israelites, but God also designated the church to proclaim His praises, as we read in 1 Peter 2.9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, His own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. The Catechism emphasizes two important purposes of the Church, making salvation accessible to all people and bringing worship and praise to God. In giving praise to God, a Christian aligns themselves with the purposes of God. In addition to fulfilling the purposes of God, praise can be prompted by the unique nature of God, His self-revelation to us through deliverance and favor, the incarnation of His Son, and can be born out of the love we feel for God that develops through our relationship with Him. We can find many examples of praise in the Bible. The Hebrew term for the Psalms translates as praises. So let's start there. You will go through some of the Psalms in your guide later, but let's look at what makes up a Psalm of praise, Psalm 146. I'll read a few excerpts for you. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, who has made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps truth forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord gives freedom to the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. But the way of the wicked he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. What can we learn about God through this psalm of praise? God is a creator, a righteous judge, a provider. He lifts up the oppressed and the burdened. He performs miracles. He is a king. When we praise God, we start to see his magnificence, his greatness, how big he is, and how small we are. And what effect could there have been on our lives? Perhaps knowing God as a provider will increase our trust in him when we are struggling or in need. Knowing he is a king makes us think about how he should be ruling in our lives. When we hear that he lifts up those who are bowed down, we feel his comfort and his love. If we make praise a priority in our lives, it could have a profound effect on our relationship with God. How then are we to praise God? Like other areas of Christian life, rich times of prayer and praise come through learning principles and putting them into practice. Here are a few thoughts. Use precise language. Spend a few minutes a day praising God for who He is. In this exercise, do not use the word praise. This will force you to say what you really mean without using a word that could be somewhat vague. In this exercise, do not use the word thanks, 
We thank God for what he has done. We praise him for who he is. Avoiding the word thanks will help you focus on praise. Begin your sentences with the word you. This will help us focus on God, not ourselves, as the subject of praise. Use the names of God. As we went through Psalm 146, we came up with specific names of God, Creator, Judge, and Provider. Spend a few minutes identifying the different names of God, and to further this idea, follow each with a statement defining the name. This might also reveal to us how well we know God. Use scriptures. Learn to use portions of scripture that are expressions of praise. These can be read or prayed over. You can find a short list in your guide to get you started. Praise him with music. Hebrews 2 says, I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing praise to you. Great hymns of faith can be an important element of musical praise. The next time you join in a hymn, really think about the words and what they tell you about who God is. Find praise in the ordinary. Let's read the message paraphrase of Romans 12, 1-2 to get a better understanding of this. So here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. When we intentionally look for God in the ordinary and mundane, we will begin to find him everywhere. Yes, in church on Sunday at 10.30 a.m., but also in the grocery store on Tuesday, in a business meeting, or the colors of a sunset. Every moment is an opportunity for praise and we can choose to participate in it. That is what we were made for.